I, my uh, presentation today is, is uh, around shared responsibilities, accounting and reporting. And I've tried hard not to fill the amount allotted to me. So I hope that there is plenty of time for you to ask questions. And you can do so either by simply interrupting me or by uh, asking questions at the end, either which way. So I wanna start with shared responsibility. Um, and I wanna start this at the very sort of high level, a 30,000 foot view by what OSG provides, what you provide and what you decide. And so OSG provides a scientific user community to consume the 20% shared time uh, by the CC Star program. Um, we provide all the support to these scientists a mechanism for scientists to make jobs to your cluster. Your cluster becomes part of the OSG Compute Federation's open pool. And um, we've talked about what the open pool is a few times now. And if there are questions or, uh, of more details, uh, feel free to ask. We provide a uniform runtime environment, including data access for these scientists. And we provide accounting data for your annual report to the NSF to show who benefited from your cluster, when and how much. You provide technically a, a set of SSH key accessible accounts from which we can submit jobs to your cluster and access to the uniform runtime environment of OSG. And uh, you saw details, all the technical details in Brian Brockman's talk just before the break and uh, saw that there is a distinction being made between minimal integration and um, integration in such a way as to maximize efficacy or, or uh, uh, utility to the overall community. Um, then you decide when, who, and how much. And I wanted to spell this out very, very explicitly. You decide which of the communities that OSG supports gets how much access to your cluster and when. You control this via your batch system configuration. In other words, if you wanna give multiple communities that OSG supports accounts to your cluster, in ways that you can dial up and down their relative at your heart's content any moment in time, whenever you feel like it, then you simply provide multiple accounts, one per each community, and then voila, your batch system controls how these accounts have relative priorities and you configure this on your end and we simply do the plumbing and plummeting. In addition, I wanted to stress that um, you're entitled to kill any job anytime you want. Um, I, I, I run a, a cluster, my, own, uh, my, uh, my group runs a cluster on OSG and I have killed jobs personally when uh, there were for a variety of different operational reasons and I never ask anybody for permission. Um, I also don't necessarily tell anybody uh, unless it's a, it, it starts to have uh, cosmic proportions and there is a really, it, it is equivalent to a downtime. And I get, I get to downtime in a second. So if there is something, some reason that you want to get something sorted and need to kill jobs any moment in time, whenever you feel like it, voila, go knock yourself out or knock the others out. Um, in addition, inversely, you're entitled to complain if we fail to use resources you make available. Meaning our goal is to use all the resources that you make available. And if you find by chance or by design or um, uh, whichever way you happen to do this, um, that we don't use everything that you give us, uh, you should uh, feel free to uh, um, let us know. And then we will work with you on figuring out how we can do better and why we didn't use all the resources when uh, you make them, made them available. Um, uh, there is, is uh, Eric Sidori who was on the panel yesterday has plenty of uh, experience of this. Um, and uh, so uh, he can uh, tell you that this is actually a, a process and uh, sometimes for larger clusters, this is a non-trivial undertaking keeping the pressure on. You've also seen in Brian's talk that there are certain things 
that you can do to uh, increase the total uh, um, accessibility by providing more than the minimal services in order to have a larger set of people uh, and therefore write out fluctuations of just availability of jobs. The user community fluctuates after all. Um, on the other hand, we do not expect you to complain, meaning you're entitled to, but if you don't wanna look and watch, you don't have to look and watch. Um, there's no Im implied responsibility in here. It's just things that you can do. Um, now I'm gonna dig in here a little bit. Let me dive in a bit further. I think the overarching message I want to give is that we want to hear your input and anything that comes next. If something is impractical to you, let us know. We're always eager to improve our processes, especially now as we start a path. Um, there's a fair number of changes that we're going to make to our processes in order to improve and scale better in the future. And um, we're more than uh, you're more than welcome to provide feedback into this uh, process and uh, have us um, uh, fix your favorite issues in addition to fixing our favorite issues. Um, and this is a process. Come, let me then now uh, talk about the things that we uh, uh, um, see the needs today and have arranged today. Uh, we need to be able to communicate with each other. You with us, we with you. Uh, therefore, we track contacts at your site, especially for security and system administration announcements, meaning when there is a security vulnerability that we learn about um, either in our software or just generally as a service to the community. Um, we will communicate this to all sites such that you are aware of it. And um, the, when there are, there are occasionally, it's rare, but they do happen, vulnerabilities in our software stack discovered and um, when there is such a thing, and to the extent that it affects you, we will let you know, and we will then and, and request that you do upgrades of certain uh, uh, pro uh, products, of certain services, in order to plug holes that uh, were found. Um, this is a very rare, rare uh, uh, incidence, but it does happen. It has happened in the last 10 years on occasion. And therefore we need to be able to communicate to system administrators. We also want to communicate um, when there are updates, when new releases come out, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we want to be able to talk with your system administrators. We need to be able to talk to you when things don't work and we think it's your fault. Um, uh, when we detect something went wrong on your side, um, and therefore need to talk to your system administrator. So there's lots and lots of reasons why we need to be in touch with you and communicate. And so therefore we keep track of these contacts. We accept listserv if that's most useful to you. And, and we request that the names that you give us as your contacts, if those names and emails change because everything changes over time, we'd like to know preferably within two business days. Uh, um, and uh, so basically once you know something change, let us know. Then um, inversely, um, or in addition, we'd like to know when things change on your side. We'd like you to communicate with us. We'd like you to announce planned cluster downtimes two business days in advance. I, I said that you are completely free to pull the plug any moment in time. And that's true. And we stick to this. However, it makes our life a lot easier if you tell us that you're gonna pl uh, uh, pull the plug um, on Friday the 13th of whatever, and then you're gonna be down for a week and uh, intend to come back up afterwards. Basically these kinds of communications uh, make our life easier because then we don't start suddenly debugging something that we see on your site and waste our time. Um, and uh, similarly, Unplanned downtimes are probably at least as common overall in this business as planned downtimes. And so we'd like you to let us know about unplanned downs as soon as possible after they happen so that we don't start debugging 
something that you already know is broken. Um, it's basically both of these are in the interest of saving time and effort on our side so that we don't do things that you already know and can communicate with us. Of course, we then also want to announce when things are back in order uh, so that we can turn things back on. Um, we may turn a uh, submission off to your site during a, a planned or unplanned outage simply to keep the mayhem at bay and uh, not have to clean up afterwards. Um, and so there is, it, it is therefore advantageous and almost essential that you tell us when things are back in order. Sometimes your perspective is things are back in order and the, then we find things that you missed. And so there is sometimes a back and forth after a downtime and it's actually not that uncommon because things are complicated and complex. And for you to miss something or uh, that uh, to uh, uh, communicate to us and therefore th something doesn't work anymore like it used to is not that uncommon. Um, and so or you should expect to tell us when things are back in order, then we will take special care to make sure that from our side, also things are back in order. We'll communicate with you any residual things that we find and it, it's a relationship between you and us that will ultimately serve science. We will announce any major change. Oh, sorry, we want you to announce any major changes. If you are planning an OS upgrade, uh, don't change an OS on us without telling us because that of course breaks everything, obviously, right? Um, and and uh, similarly, when you change the configuration in your batch system or uh, even change batch system, you must tell us because how else would we know how to submit to that batch system? It is remarkable how many uh, um, uh, information breakdown we've seen over the last 10 years. Basically anything that you can imagine being missed to communicate has been missed to communicate at various points in time. And so it's no big deal when something is missed, um, but uh, we'd like all of us to try and avoid this as much as possible so that we inform each other and therefore minimize the effort on your side and on our side and maximize the ability and effectiveness to the overall scientific community. In fact, if anything, I would say that we prefer you to overshare rather than undershare. Um, if you are not sure whether there's something that you should share with us, share it. Um, and uh, you'll I'll hear back with, when, and uh, if this is, is uh, useful, irrelevant, whatever. Um, the, uh, the way I see it, this is a relationship that gets built over time. And as we build the relationship, both sides get a better understanding of the respective other. And therefore you, we get a better understanding of what is and, and is not necessary to communicate. Um, uh, we will inversely, we will let you know when things change on our side. All of the above also applies in the inverse. When we make any kind of changes, we will let you know. Um, when we do maintenance, plant maintenance on the hosted CEs for upgrades, we'll let you know. So that when, that, uh, when you're uh, seeing suddenly, whoops, what happened? No OSG jobs have, are coming today. Um, so that you know, yes, this is because, oh yeah, they told me a, a couple of days ago that they're planning a downtime. And uh, the downtime is, is expected to last from X to Y. And uh, voila, I, I should therefore, uh, what I see should is expected, that sort of thing. Um, then we've been asked whether or not we have an MOU, a memorandum of our understanding. Um, we've, I've, Googled, on, uh, I've, uh, as always, when I, I try to understand a term, I went to Wikipedia to understand what MOU actually means. And I would claim that the kind of agreements that we have are not as formal as an MOU. And so, no, we don't have an MOU, at least not yet. What we're trying to draft right now is something that we'd like to call policy on shared responsibilities, or maybe understanding of shared responsibility or something like this, rather than using the word MOU, but in some sense it is an MOU. Um, and so 
what this will contain is everything that I've, I've said on the previous slides. In addition, it will contain pointers to other policies that we have. For example, we have an acceptable use policy for uh, researchers to use the open science grid. Um, we have securities policies and expectations. Um, we have a policy of accounts, access and privacy. Um, we have the OSG principles sharing. So lots of stuff that you've seen in these two days are fundamental policy like, more policy like things than technical things. And we aspire to write all of this down over time and make that available in such a way that you have a comprehensive set of understanding of shared responsibilities because some of you have asked for it. And, but right now, this very moment, we don't have it. And uh, in partly this is, uh, we, we late, basically started it too late in front of this workshop and, and then realized that there's so much to consider that we didn't want to do something, uh, send out something that was half-assed and uh, then have to change it immediately. So we want to spend a bit of time on this and do the first draft right. However, um, if you feel strongly about something that you've seen that you want to be reflected, um, send us a note and let us know. And if the first version that we will eventually send to you seems to be missing things or seems to be overly um, uh, strange language, um, contractual, too formal, um, let us know that too. Uh, we look at this as a set as in a document that is meant to serve you and us in order to build a long-term relationship. Um, it's not a intended to put down a law that uh, uh, describes the relationship. It's meant as a living document that builds the foundation of trust and the long-term relationship between you and us. And, uh, and so um, now I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about accounting and reporting. Um, and the basic statements I wanna make up front, we're here to help you provide reports to not just the NSF, but also any other entities that you need to report to. Um, as uh, if you're working at a university or probably any other uh, institution of some reasonable size, then you will have every now and then reporting requirements of whomever is your boss inside your organization. And uh, we hope that our accounting will be useful for those reports just as well as the reports to the NSF. Again, this is all about building long-term trust, long-term relationships so that we can help each other to support science that benefits from distributed high throughput computing. This, the corollary to this is also, of course, that it is not our role to tell you what to report to whom. Um, we don't get into, or, uh, we provide, we simply provide information. You choose how, when, and how much to use it. Uh, you are completely in control of what you report. And uh, so or in that sense, we will make, tell you what we make public. And then you can take out of this whatever you want and use that in your reports. And I wanted to now uh, point to two tools, one of which the GRAC accounting, Brian already talked about this, uh, uh, two slides worth. I come back to it a little bit in the end, but uh, um, the basics we've already seen. I wanted to uh, uh, talk about a second and, um, a tool that we provide that is much less well known to people and that I use personally in order to do my reporting to conferences and give talks um, uh, to the NSF, uh, whatever, very uh, heavily, because it allows me to understand our user community. And actually, I think it's fun to look at uh, that part of our, uh, 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 that tool. And it's the project registration in GitHub each account that has access to the open pool must register with the project. Um, so 
given that you've heard uh, earlier from Lauren that uh, you don't have to report your projects from your um, from your submit host, let me explain how what I'm saying is not in conflict to what Lauren told you. I'm saying that if you want, if you have a project, say you're um, University of Timbuktu and you have 10 projects that use the OSG. If you want those 10 projects to be treated just like any other project from OSG Connect, such that they have equal access and can compete in the same way for resources on OSG, just like OSG Connect, and are not um, hidden behind your identity when they compete for access, you need to tell us those projects. That's basically the requirement. And that is when I say each account that has access to the open pool must register with a project, your entire university could be one quote unquote account. So if you don't wanna tell us the, the um, internal structure of the projects in your place, then you don't. But you as a totality will still be an account that is registered as a project in the open pool in order of access. Whether it's LIGO is a, is a project which has a gazillion people in it, different pro sub projects, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they're nevertheless registered as one thing. We don't care what's happening inside, they're registered as one thing. And, and we have campuses that treat themselves that way. And we have campuses that prefer to be individually exposing their projects. And mostly campuses who individually expose their projects do so in order to maximize the access of these projects to the open pool, because those projects are then treated as peers to the other projects in OSG Connect, rather than as the entire university being treated as a peer. And, uh, and uh, even if we give you a little bit more as a priority for the entire university, chances are you get more access by exposing your projects. Now, each let, project- let me, let me interject here for a moment because some of the terminology may be confusing. So think about it as the open science pool. It's not the OSG Connect. OSG Connect is the way we bring on a user. But the way that we manage the resource is the open science pool. Sound, uh, sounds uh, it's good. I will try to or, um, or reflect that. So the, uh, um, if there are questions, we can discuss this further. Uh, um, then each project has a minimum description register with us. And you're welcome to use those descriptions for your reports. And we, want, we uh, make them available to you. Um, here's three examples. I have another one uh, later. And uh, I, uh, these are three examples that I had readily available because I screen captured them a while ago. But um, basically every single project is registered in a, via a little, a short descriptions. Sometimes the description is very, very short, a sentence. Sometimes it's more verbose to give you more set of a sense. And the level of verbosity is entirely left up to the PI that is the PI of the project. Um, now, I wanna move on to accounting a little bit. And you've seen the accounting we have in Brian uh, Ayn's talk earlier today. I want to show you what I'd like us to have. So you're going to, in a sense, get a preview what I would like, would find useful to show to you. And um, if this, if there are other things that you would like to have that is not in what I'm going to show you, feedback is always welcome because we are we intend to improve especially our accounting pages that are geared towards campuses that are part of the CC Star program. Meaning we want to make our reporting as useful as possible, sorry, our accounting as useful as possible, such that you have minimum amount of effort 
to use them in your reporting. So let me show you the kind of things that I would like to, to provide you with and don't provide you yet. Um, so what, I've, I, what I'm using here is I'm using the COVID-19 um, a, a graph page as example to explain what I'd like you to be able to see, but you don't see it. So think of this as a proof of principle. I want you to be able to see use versus time of all the consumers. I want you to be able to pick a window, a time window, for which you then get the aggregate of those users as a pie chart. And I want to, uh, you to be able to click a link in the Grok page such that it brings you directly to the project description that I just talked about. So for example, if you were to, or uh, if I were to go into real time, if I was adventurous enough to do, do this in real time, I could show you that uh, a COVID-19 page, I would then click on, on uh, this link here, and this will uh, lead you to this web page. Um, I've, I've shortened it a little bit. It basically it points you to a, a, a place in GitHub with this description, and then you can, and uh, you can therefore, I'd like you to be able to easily uh, um, follow, easily select a time window, figure out who's the biggest user of your site, see the time history of that use, click on that user and understand what science that user does. So that it's sort of a one-stop shopping of the information, even for digging deep, um, at least as deep as is allowed by virtue of um, the description that we have here. Um, then uh, in addition, I want the, uh, to have all of the stuff that Brian showed. Sites will be selectable just like Brian showed earlier today. There will be consumption versus time, consumption aggregate for time window by project, by, by field of science and by institution of the payout of the project. So let me, the last one is maybe the, uh, uh, it needs a little bit of suggestion. I want you to look at which projects consumed how much and when and see all of the stuff that we just talked about, consumption versus time, consumption in aggregate by project. A different slice would be by field of science because each project has a field of science. And once you aggregate by field of science, you can see the diversity of science and by institution of the PI of the project. So I consider these three pieces of information. And if you see here, um, there is the field of science, health, um, there is the organization, in this case, LSU School of Public Health. And so what we will aggregate for you is as a function of this field and as a function of this field, so that you get aggregate statistics for that you could use in your reporting. Um, and if there's other things that you'd like to see, let us know how our accounting can be more useful to you. Um, and finally, I'm, I'm finishing off. As I've said uh, at least twice uh, so far, OSG's objective is to advance open science through this with high school computing. In fact, I think you've seen this in probably almost every talk. Um, this is our objective. And we think of ourselves as part social and part technical projects. And that's in my mind, really, really important. Often the most difficult things in order to accomplish our objectives are the social things rather than the technical things. And so we are as much a process organization in order to establish trust and maintain and build relationships as we are a technical organization that implements those processes technically and automates them in order to make them scalable. That's really what we are at the core. And to achieve our objective, we want to engage with you and build long-term relationships. And I want to thank you all for um, uh, participating in this workshop. And uh, you, uh, I, I forgot to update this. This is meant to say support at omscience.org. Help also will get you there, but uh, we're trying to, anyway, sorry.